Mr. Rabbit here, and time for another boring activity explanation. Uh, tonight I'd like to go over the weather fronts activity. I've selected this map from an old Regents. Uh, it shows you a low pressure storm system, uh, and actually it's got all four fronts that are shown on the reference table on them. So just to review fronts before we start the activity, right here you've got the symbol for a cold front. Okay, we're going to look at a cross-section of what a cold front ha is, but a cold front is the triangles. You've got a continental polar air mass pushing into a maritime tropical air mass. This section of this system would be considered a warm front. All right, in a warm front, you have maritime tropical air pushing into continental polar air. This section over here is showing you the symbol for a stationary front. On the stationary front, the warm front and the cold front symbols are opposite each other. This side would be the warm side, so you'd have the tropical air mass. The warm air goes behind the warm front symbol, and then the cold front symbol is here, so this side is the cold side, and you see the continental polar air. Now, the fourth type of front is illustrated right here. That would be an occluded front and we'll go over the process of occlusions in a minute when we look at some cross-sectional diagrams of this. So, more diagrams from the Earth Science Regents exam. At the top, this one with City A and City B is definitely a cold front. This would be a continental polar air mass pushing into a maritime tropical air. This point on the surface would be where the line is shown on your weather map, but a cold front actually is a three-dimensional surface, and at a cold front, the warm, moist air rises because it's less dense. You get short, heavy precipitation, and the type of clouds that you get are cumulonimbus clouds. So that's a cross section or a side view of a cold front. On the bottom from another Regents exam, this would be a good example of a warm front. The point on the surface where the two air masses meet is here. So this is where the line would be drawn on your map. So the warm front is here. This is your maritime tropical air mass. This is your continental polar air mass. It's always the warm air that rises. Now, you'll see in this one, at a warm front, the rain goes ahead of the warm front. So you get short, heavy rain at the cold front, and you get sort of slow, gentle precipitation preceding or ahead of your warm front. Now, the clouds are also different. Okay, with a warm front, this overhangs the cold air, and you have hundreds of miles of sort of stratus clouds forming there. Now, on weather maps, you're typically going to see both warm fronts and cold fronts associated with low pressure cyclonic storm systems. So this is your classic low. Okay, you've got a maritime tropical air mass sandwiched between the frontal surfaces, and you have a continental polar air mass here. So it's warm in between and it's cold outside. Okay, you would get a broader area of precipitation ahead of the warm front. So it's raining ahead of your warm front. The rain wraps around the center of your low because your air rises and you get a short but heavy band of precipitation along the cold front. So it's warm inside and it sort of rains all the way along the outside of that open low pressure cyclonic storm system. I'm going to draw a point A here and I'm going to draw a point B here and I'm going to go straight through the warm sector. So I've got the maritime tropical air mass in between. This is another diagram from a different regions that shows you that exact same scenario. I've got a cold front. OK, 
okay and the cold front is forcing the warm air up forming the clouds at the edge the leading edge of your cold front here I have a warm front at the warm front the warm air rises over the cold air so that would be a continental polar air mass now the issue here is that cold fronts tend to move faster and warm fronts tend to move slower so you have a faster moving cold front that's catching up to a slower moving warm front when we look at the slow, low pressure cyclonic storm system up at the top right near the point of your low pressure the cold front is close to the warm front so the cold front eventually catches up and collides with the back of the warm front and right here near the center of the low is where occluded fronts usually start to form so at an occlusion it's almost like this system this open system is going to zip down creating an occluded front in the center so here's some more diagrams showing you that on the left you've got an open system a mature mid-latitude cyclone you note it's counterclockwise and towards the center okay but it's still an open phase so I have my cold front with the cumulonimbus clouds the warm front and the maritime tropical air mass is in the center okay when it starts to become an occluded front you'll see up here in the center it begins to form an occluded front so the cold front collides with the warm front and now your maritime tropical air mass is forced alow, aloft so you'll get heavy rain you'll also get you know significant cloud formation enough about fronts let's take a look at the activity on the bottom make sure you read the entire top that goes over warm fronts cold fronts but let's look at the principles that we're going to use for this so if I'm trying to find a front on a weather map okay I'm gonna look at the station models you can typically notice where fronts are based on these five changes and it tells you the first two are the most important statements so temperatures are usually much lower on one side of the front than the other the wind directions are sharply different so if I've got a front that separates air masses I should be getting distinctly different characteristics on opposite sides of my front the wind velocities are usually higher on one side the air pressure is higher in the colder air because cold air is more dense so my isobars are going to bend sharply finally my dew points typically are different one might be a maritime air mass that has a higher dew point and the other one might be a continental air mass and continental air tends to be dry so let's take a look we're going to flip this over we're going to start off with two relatively simple maps all right this map i've got seven stations so i want you to try to draw a line that separates them into two groups okay honestly one side is going to be warmer the other side is going to be colder uh, pause the video now and see if you can identify where the frontal boundary is thanks for pausing the video all right I hope you indicated or you saw that there is definitely a division between these four weather stations and these three all of these have higher temperatures and the winds are blowing from the southwest all of these show lower temperatures and the winds are blowing from the southeast so the question is is this a warm front moving towards the northeast or if it, is it a cold front moving towards the southwest just based on the wind directions okay these winds are going to push that line to the northeast and the fact that all the clouds and the rain is on this side of the line should help you see that this is going to be a warm front moving to the northeast so the tropical air on this side 
is pushing into the polar air on that side. So this should be a warm front moving in that direction. All right, second example. Here's another weather map. Okay, typically at fronts you get rising air. So if you look for where the precipitation is, sometimes that'll help you identify the fronts. So please take a look at this map, look at it carefully, try to notice where a distinct boundary separates these weather stations. Okay, pause the video, try to find it, try to figure out what type of front it is. Thanks for pausing it and trying it on your own. Now, all of these stations have really clear skies and the temperatures are in the 40s and 50s. Over here, I've got temperatures in the 30s and the 20s and the wind's speed and direction are significantly different. So I'm going to draw my front frontal boundary right along here. Okay, when I look at this, the precipitation is on this side of the line and the colder air appears to be pushing this front. So if I look at this, this should be a cold front and this is consistent with what we know about cold fronts because at cold fronts you get short heavy precipitation at and behind the front. You'll see that this city is far enough behind the front that those cumulonimbus clouds have blown through and now you're starting to get clearer, drier, and colder conditions in that location. All right, on to the last map. The last map is showing you a much broader area. Okay, you're actually going to have two frontal boundaries in this map. The two frontal boundaries that you're going to find um, actually intersect. So this is a classic low pressure cyclonic storm system. There are a couple of stations here that I think definitely are going to be things that you, um, and hopefully we don't get that on the tape, something just popped up on the computer, but there's a couple of weather stations here that I probably think aren't quite accurate, but we'll go with the map as it's drawn. Take a second, see if you can locate the fronts, pause the video, and try to find the fronts yourself. All right, thanks for trying that on your own. Here's one boundary that I would draw. You'll see you've got heavy precipitation, okay, you've got snow indicated, and the temperature's in the 30 on this side. You have 50s and 40s over here. Now, I've got 49, 52, and 50 there, so I would draw a second line there. So I now have the beginning of my fronts. My cold air is moving this way. So this is going to be a cold front. All right. So your cold air is moving that way. This would be your maritime tropical air mass. And this would be the warm air moving in this direction. So we just finished step one on the bottom. Now that you've done that, you want to do the information for part two. Part two says draw the isobars. Isobars should be four millibars apart. And you're going to start off with the 978 millibar isobar. If I take 978.0, you're going to eliminate the nine. You're going to get rid of the decimal. So 978.0 would look like 780. All right, so you're going to start at 780. You're going to go by intervals of four millibars. So you're going to draw isobars for 780, 820, 860, and 900 are what's going to be recorded on the station model. I'm going to end this tape now, and then we'll pick up with the rest of this on part two. Take care.